All right, we're going to call the uh, commission report session of February 7th to order. The meeting is being recorded, and anything said in this meeting is part of public record. Um, we have two items on the agenda today. First of all, opening RFPs for the reconstruction of the stormwater uh, sewer in Clarendon, and the second is a discussion with the Transit Authority. Beyond those two, are there any topics of discussion that the public would like to bring to the table? Right, and then we'll start with opening the RFPs on the reconstruction stormwater. There she is. Just there. See, I see here. Yep. Yes. Okay, the first RFP is from Dice and Colony Engineering, mm -hmm. Environmental and Civil Engineers. <laughs> I guess that's a, some sort of a cover letter. It might be divided between stormwater management and maybe design and inspection. Which one are we going to see? I just take one. So I do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure either. Yeah. What we're looking for, so. Right. 
so I assume these are just like reference documents. So. Yes, and so um, <laughs> I will review them actually, and then I'll get together with Carmen Barlow, I think, maybe next week, and review them at Walmart Fund and give our recommendation. Okay. So this would potentially be on the agenda for the 23rd. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to discuss something about this. Okay. Yeah. Me yes, thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh. I'm not taking that box. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Want the stuff in the box? Not really. Oh. Is there stuff in the box? Oh. I didn't think so. Yeah, I'll take the stuff in the box. <laughs> okay, right. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, transit authority. Uh, Mr. Iverson, would you remind me um, what we're chatting about? So this is the, um, the discussion about the, the match for the buses. Uh, right. So I haven't, I've been trying to dig through all of my emails over the past couple of years to try to remember all the different discussions that we've had on this. Um, because my recollection of a lot of it is even easy. Um, so obviously we received a letter from Wendy regarding the match for three Gaelic buses. Um, and this was a couple of years ago, right? Or a year ago? It was in 2020? Yeah. yeah. The buses were put in circulation two years ago, like in 2020, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, and, um, <clears throat> and so, um, at the time, there was a miscommunication, like as far as what the situation was with the match. I, I think that because I'm on the board, I think that's part of the miscommunication was that the commissioners were fully aware of um, what the situation was there. E either way, the buses were purchased and the county never officially made a match like resolution or anything for right. the matches like twenty six thousand or something. It's twenty five thousand. Yeah, but that's the plan I had two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The number is twenty five two oh four. Okay. So um and we we did agree to that part of the match because of the miscommunication basically. Right. Well that's the thing that I haven't been able to I, I guess that that's where the confusion is, like on the fiscal department and other things. Um, uh, obviously, Lisa started after um, Eric had left. Um, those discussions took place at that time. It was your memory that it was budgeted for. I I want to confirm that, like just to make sure, because I'm not. I can't remember if it was budgeted for or not. I kind of thought that it was supposed to come out of CARES Act. I think you're right. I just want to. I just want to make sure because, if in, in any case, I don't know that we ever signed a resolution stating that. So, which is what's required in order to make that contribution. Um, so, um, so now, two years later, PennDOT has obviously like sent a letter out, and they want to know what the situation is. And so, the when I forwarded all of this to everybody, the discussion then was, you know, was this concern over the, you know, the utilization of Gilly buses overall in the system, given the the number of passengers on a bus on average, and really stating that this cost is going to increase over time. You know, trying to maintain these buses, is that the right? Solution for the transit authority. Right. With the, uh, that was our objection at the time, but we acknowledged that they were already ordered. Yeah. So we well, go ahead and cover those. But no. I think I think though at the time though the, also the conversation was two bus two buses had been ordered and one was on the way. Um, anyway, let's put it this way. I, I <laughs> my memory of it is hazy at best. So, but the the question then becomes like. As a part of this commitment by the county, mm -hmm. is there a willingness to um, 
think kind of, kind just, of justify the big buses, right? I mean, it, I'm not super familiar with them, but every time I see them drive by, I see like two people on it. So the question is, you know, I understand you probably need some buses that are full size. What do you call them? Gillum? Gillum. 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 Uh, but is there some sort of a compromise that might be cheaper, like 15 passenger vans for some of the time that would be more efficient or something? Yes, Grace? Um, I don't know if Wendy wants to talk about this, but the state seems to have a position on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we weren't bumbling along when we did this. Yeah. Um, the state seems to have a position that they don't want transit authorities having mixed groups of buses. Uh, and so we have one kind of bus for fixed route and one kind of bus for um, shared ride, which is different funding streams. And the logic seems to be that you, the maintenance staff in any transit authority will not do a safe, adequate job if they're working on all kinds of different buses. And you can't keep a parts inventory for different kinds of things. It's kind of like the transit authority buys one set of washers for the whole, all the complexes, and they keep parts for one kind of washer, and then when the useful life is done, they get rid of them, and they get a whole new thing. So it's sort of like that. And the other thing is the, um, there's a policy that I don't, I can't, I can't explain it or justify it, it this is that you buy the bus for your largest, um, your largest demand. And we do have demands, not all the time, but there are demands for more than 16 passengers, which is what the next size down is. Right. And the next size down is a gas engine bus. They have a life expectancy of five years. These gillets are 15 years. So your cost savings is not as much as you would think it would be. Well, and I think I think the thing is, is that um, you know, the the challenge has always been there's a lot of like anecdotal evidence as far as like what the system can withstand or utilize, and I think that's the question that's been asked repeatedly is is can we definitively state that one is cheaper than the other long term, like because everybody can acknowledge that the resources we have is limited. Um, and the thing is, is it's not that anybody here, everybody here supports public transportation, like it wants to see people utilize the buses. Um, but, you know, like in, in this case, like the three buses alone was a million and a half dollars. Um, and when you extrapolate that out even over five years, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an immense amount of, of, of resource for, you know, to say, and so one of the things that, um, that I was thinking when this was brought up as an issue is to, um, especially with, uh, um, uh, with the, the, the recent infrastructure packages that were put in place, is to have somebody come in and do a thorough evaluation of the numbers, the utilization of the buses, and basically state definitively one way or the other if this is the best solution for the system overall. And um, that's something that we could do, not at a cost of the county, obviously it'd be like grant funded, but it would be something that would then, uh, I think, help solve that. Um, and, and from my perspective too, for the long-term um, viability of the transportation system, that needs to be answered. Like it, from my perspective, because this question is going to come up over and over and over again until it's definitively solved. Well, something that was explained to me last week when all of this started was comparing a gill egg is the same as a roadway being built. The roadway is not being built for peak season or peak traffic all the time, and neither are the gill eggs. They're being built for the peak when we have our peak times. This time of year, unfortunately, is not a peak time, but you come into the summertime when we have Jefferson DeFries utilizing our fixed route to go to Sheffield, go to Youngsville, you've got at least 20 people on that bus plus our regular passengers. So now that even means that we have to have another driver come in, so now you have a higher cost to drive two buses or we run the Gillies. And I, I understand the Gillies are more expensive, 
but if you go with a 16 passenger like you're discussing, that's over 100,000, and that's only a five-year bus, whereas the Gilly is over 400,000, and you've got 15 years. So if you look at it like that, um, yeah. it's about the same. You have to but you the have the room because you don't have to pay the extra driver to either sit and wait to get called out or to be on standby. That's the way that it was explained to me. And the Gillig's do hold up way better than those white buses do. Yeah, and I, I think that that would come out in any type of evaluation that was done on it. You know, it's, I think it's very sensible. I mean, what you're saying, mm -hmm. I'm not disagree with that at all. This apparently comes up constantly, so much that they make videos about it <laughs> to explain this. If you want to see a video, I mean, here's a video that I can forward it to. You. Yes, and. So, I mean, every county looks at this and sees periodically or all the time buses that don't have a lot of people on it. And they're saying, what are we doing with our money? We don't have enough money to go around and why are we doing this? So, I would just say, okay, but maybe the results should be forwarded around the state so we don't have all the counties doing what you're doing and spending all this grant money on well, so these second, studies. Secondarily, um to, to do it that way, I wouldn't necessarily have it just be about whether the buses are, you know, what the most efficient bus is. Um, we've also had conversations about um, putting together plans for housing in the county, for instance, and the, the utilization of transportation is a part of that. So part of it would be, like, what, where did the buses go? What is the access to the community of those buses? Are all alternate routes justified? situation that can be baked into it as well so I don't want to I think it would be a waste to say um, we're just going to try to evaluate if a Gillig bus is the right bus you know I think that it should be a transportation discussion um, but my point is is a featured piece of it would be kind of answering this question definitively based on you know the routes the number of average tra travelers what the peak times are how often those peak that really piques my interest. Yeah. There's no way with this sparse, thin staffing for administration that the transit already has that they could ever look at all that stuff. Exactly. So if you want to know the answers to that for long range planning or short range planning. This is kind of like a strategic planning. Yeah. Kind of yeah. You have to do that because um, we have almost among the lowest or the lowest administrative to um, mm -hmm. process cost in the state. Mm -hmm. So as far as efficiency are going, that's probably one of the scores that we get way high mm -hmm. on across counties. And there's just no way that the staff can do that. I remember you telling me that when uh, the state was trying to push us into some sort of a multi-county consortium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we would we would lose. Yeah. <laughs> well, and just to hire people in other parts of the state, you know, to do with our tax dollars to do jobs that we can do. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so if that, then what we can do is, is uh, if it's okay, then we tack on a resolution to the um, Wednesday's agenda, and then at the same time. Like we'll just we'll send a formal letter to the talk board, just to state that we're going to move forward with an initiative to do an evaluation of transit and um, and work as collaborate collaborators in order to get that done. When, we when, do have a March fifteenth deadline that we have to pay that twenty five thousand dollars. We have to have a letter in writing that we're yeah. going to get that money. Yeah, our, our meeting's Wednesday. Yeah, so we, we may send it to you after that. Yeah. Okay. So that'll cover that now. Let's say your project takes six months or a year or something in order to do both the cost benefit analysis on the buses but also mm -hmm. the human services angle of the transportation. Mm -hmm. um, at what point would you be coming back for more for additional buses at the end of these 15 year life for these three or are there more that are? Actually we have two um, 
that still need to be replaced from the original ones that we have. Okay. And that amount would be 9000 A little over 9000 don't quote me exactly, but it's under 10000 Is that a this year thing or a It would be or? at least a year. At least a year out. Okay. So that's how that works. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I think this is, I, like I said, I, part of the reason that um, I have approached this as a solution to the discussion was, um, you know, with the, the, the infrastructure bill, like there's there's a huge pot of money for planning and development. So this seems like a, the perfect kind of opportunity to kind of do that. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be hard. Great, to, because it won't happen again. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, and, and they're, that's what they're looking to do with it. I mean, is to get to improve and evaluate these, these transportation systems. So. All right. Well, uh, you will work on getting the resolution on this day's agenda. Yep. Back to the letter. Thank you so much for your time and. Uh, Thank you for your time. No problem. Uh, thanks for your understanding too. Yes. I'm excited for the conversation with that. And I, would, I would like to have those answers too because it's not infrequent when we get calls and I'm complaining about things. I'd like to be able to have those answers in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank you. much for your time. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot left on the agenda. Um, no other whole items of discussion, I don't believe. Policy and procedures stuff. Um, the commissioners chatted uh, with the staff about what they want to do and prioritize. Uh, we have a list of, I think it was 30 some documents that we want to have done by. Mm -hmm. um, Memorial Day, since getting more back done after Memorial Day probably is less likely than in the next 13 weeks. Uh, so I'm going to be tasking departments with those uh, officially, and we'll be getting them on the agenda in the near future. Project-wise, um, that is my project update. Any projects for you? Um, so I've met with uh, Mr. Gilbert and Mr. Watts. Um, discuss the policies and procedures and okay. so we're going to try to get some stuff hammered out in the next two weeks and then like circle back around and then, uh, I'm probably going to try to hit up a couple of the other departments I'm associated with too at some point but those two were the ones that had the most uh, obvious material that could be um, developed and um, tax them for instance I mean they've done 19 documents already so I have to review those and get through those um, before kind of expand on that. And um, what else is going on? Um, um, all the other stuff. So Please feast your eyes on the February 9th meeting. Um, on the agenda, we'll have resolution 3200 for CEDG stuff, and the agenda we are agreeing on the JLMIC repository bids, the EAP renewal, um, the discussion regarding the county class. Which, can you just give us a Preview now. Like, are you going to want to? Are you going to have a draft resolution for that, or is basically the recommendation going to be no? Yeah, basically the recommendation will be to leave things where they are. Yeah. Okay. I kind of feel like it's still a thunder on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I don't know if we're going to have a resolution or not. Like, you know, I, I thought what you should what you should have said was I really feel like I want to wait until the news and then everybody would be like, gosh, well, what's gonna happen? <laughs> it's like it's like Titanic, like I know the ending already. Right. <laughs> like this is like a one lightning bolt storm. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna push the state of the county off um, until uh, Commissioner Durbin can be there and um, I wouldn't want to compete with, with you. That, that's really the problem. I need to do what's done now. So uh, and then we'll also add the resolution related to the talk match. Anything else that is? Uh, I'll be on the 23rd. Barely. Flying back in the 22nd. Okay. Um, let's see. Anything else that needs to go on the agenda? 
Here none. Schedule wise, uh, it's a pretty normal week, I believe, for me. Nothing to note. Nope. Nothing to bring up. So, is there any calls for executive session? Mr. Solicitor? Um, maybe just real briefly. General clause that. Um, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll get legal advice. No. <laughs> no. You want to finish your coffee before you <laughs> come and circle the ground? <laughs> um, I guess it would be on. It would be on litigation. Okay. Briefly. Okay. Well, is there anything else we can do to order? I've got one on <laughs> so a lot of other counties will send out a reminder notice before we really get started on the tax sale process. Mm -hmm. So I hear this year I'll give it a go and give it a try and see how it works out. But we're going to mail out reminder notices to let them know their 2020s are with us as delinquent. And if they don't, if they don't pay, then we might proceed with sale process pretty much. So these are going out this week. And here's about 1,200 of them. So hopefully we see uh, influx of payments. and can see lesser numbers later on. So it's a pretty normal number, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, no, not really. By the time we get to our tax sale notes in the paper, maybe we're getting it down to about 500 or so. Right, at this stage. At this stage, yeah, it's a typical number. Yeah. Okay. But the hopes is people will see this, come in, and pay. So there'll be less in the paper later, less mailings, all that sort of stuff later on. Yeah. That's all I could say. Yeah. This will be the first year that Warren County ever done something like this, so we'll see what the results are like. Okay. Good. So you get a heads up, gives you phone calls. <laughs> which we will. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else? Hearing none, we'll go into we'll adjourn and go into executive session.